Filthy nomad. Every person that lives out of their car has one little or one major fear. And that is the cops come knocking at your door in the middle of the night and ask you, what are you doing? Now that happened to me in the beginning of my journey. In the beginning of starting to live out of my car as I was still figuring out you know, where to go, where not to go, where I was still figuring out the rules and the laws and the regulations of certain places. I think it was the first week. The first week I was down in a beach area that had a rest stop. Um, now this rest stop, similar to others, had a certain time limitation that you could, uh, you know, basically park there and stay there, which I was only somewhat aware of. I really wasn't even sure. I really didn't fully even understand that at the time. But my my issue was I was trying to figure out where I was going to park for the night. I was still trying to figure out spots. I said, well, I'll go to this one rest stop because I know it's in the local area. Now, this area was a, a, by a beach town in the middle of the winter um, in a northern state. So it's kind of like a seasonal town. There's not too much traffic because people really only come up there during the summer. And that was my first mistake. So when there's not a lot of traffic and there's not a lot of people in that area only during the summer and it's like in an off season, it's the winter or the fall or something like that. And you park there, you may be the only person there and all eyes are on you. When all eyes are on you, not good usually, not good. Bottom line, uh, I wasn't doing anything bad though. I wasn't, you know, as far as like, you know, causing any trouble. I never do that. I try to always be respectful. But the bottom line is, so I figure, I figure I need somewhere to sleep. I don't like to, uh, you know, like park, you know, illegally or somewhere and sleep in my car. I don't like to park on streets. I try to find, you know, either a campground or a rest area, but I just didn't know all the rules and regulations. So I go to this rest area in the off season, uh, you know, like the winter, um, beginning of spring area by a beach town in, in a northern state and this rest area doesn't have too much traffic yet because it's still the off season. So I, I go to the rest area, I park a little bit away from there like a convenience store, I park a little bit away from that and I set up my bed or whatever and I go to sleep. Now at that time too, I didn't even have window covers. So then I go to sleep and I don't know what it was, three, four hours later, here come the cops. Now, they didn't even get to knock on my door. They didn't get, because all I did was sleeping and I actually was starting in my back seat and I didn't have my back seat set up right. So I ended up right in my driver's seat and I had, my, uh, I had the seat all the way laid back and I'm trying to go to sleep and I was sleeping. And then all I saw was like this blinding flashlight. I mean, you know what the light, the flashlight the cops have? It's like, it's like flashing the sun directly in your eyes. I mean, so all I saw, I look, it, made, it made my eyes that were sleeping, it made them like open up. Because I saw this blinding light beaming on the side of my face. And it was the cop's flashlight. And he didn't fully approach my car window. Because, you know, they're a little nervous. They didn't know what to expect. So he's got his flashlight in one hand. And he's like, you know, got his hand by his gun holster in the other. Because, you know, you always have to remember. Look, cops, they deal with various different types of people. And some people, they just cause trouble. And they, they have to be, by nature, by, they have to be on guard. And so you have to respect that. And the best thing you can do is try to understand that. And not to give them any more reason to be anxious or to be nervous because, you know, they, you know, they're in a tough position as far as their job and, and they're, especially in the middle of the night. So here they come about three, three a.m. in the morning. They got a flashlight beaming at me. He's got one hand on his gun. There was one guy here and the other guy was like in the front of my car and they're like, you know, almost surrounding the car. One cop car in the back and then like two cops here. And the flashlight's on the side of my face. Like I wake up, like I'm startled and I look over and it's the cop. I said, oh, oh. And, uh, and so I rolled down my window, I unlocked my car, I rolled down my window and I go, oh, you know, is everything okay? He goes, no, no, no. He goes, uh, we're trying to see, uh, what's going on here. I go, oh, nothing going on. I just pulled over the side of the road. You know, I was driving from a long way and I was tired, which was true. I was, you know, um, so he goes, oh, okay. He goes, uh, you know, and he already ran my license plates too. I mean, that's the other thing. So they ran a the license plate and said, yeah, I see you're from, and he, you know, put the address and I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, he goes, you know, what are you doing in here? I was, well, I was visiting, you know, a certain person here and there. And he goes, okay. He goes, um, he goes, well, he goes, I just want to know one is I wanted to let you know that this rest area isn't 24 seven. So in the off season, the convenience store was only open till like midnight. And I didn't even realize that. So that's the first problem. So then anybody in that parking lot is like a red flag to them because if there's no convenience store open, then why is anybody even in the rest stop? 
And then the other issue was, I think technically by law, they vary depending on the rest area and what it's for, but it could be like a two to three hour max limit. You can stay or sleep in your car or whatever rest. It's a rest area. And so I go, well, is there a problem? He goes, no, no, no. He goes, he goes, the one thing is we saw this car here for a few hours. And once we saw the convenience store was closed and you were still parked here, we had got concerned that there were either drugs or alcohol or that something was wrong with the person in the car. So we wanted to come to the car to see one is if you were okay. And then two is, you know, make sure there was no like type of illegal activity going on that you weren't drinking or anything. He goes, but the cops talking to me now and the cop goes, but I see that, you know, you're just sleeping, you know, you're not causing any problems. So, you know, we don't have an issue with it. And he goes, he goes, you know, just T goes, technically, you know, you're only supposed to stay here two to three hours max. He goes, but you know, we don't want you to drive if you're tired. He goes, so, you know, as long as you're not doing nothing illegally, you know, rest until, you know, you can drive. And then when you're, you know, when you wake up or whatever, he goes, just go, go upon your way. He goes, we have no problem with that. We just had to respond because, you know, we, they patrol the area. See, state troopers and people all sign the highway, they patrol the area and they look at the rest stops, you know, but again, they, they, you know, they were mainly looking at this rest stop because this rest stop, you know, it wasn't a lot, there's not a lot of traffic. If you're talking about rest stops in the middle where there's a lot of traffic, it's on a major highway and there's truck drivers there, there's this and that, that, you know, then they're not, you know, they're not really paying attention, you know, unless a car is camped there for months on end, you know. So my, my lesson learned was one is obviously if it's a rest area and it's not 24 seven and it's in an odd area, as far as it's a seasonal town and you know, there's not a lot of traffic there, you know, you're going to stick out like a store thumb. Two is, you know, well, you know, and always, another lesson is always remember that the cops are ready to feel full. So always be pleasant to them and try to, you know, understand where they're coming from. Another lesson is that they'll be flexible with you. Look, if they catch you sleeping in your car, I mean, if you're not in a, in a, in a pub, if you're not on a, on a street corner in front of somebody's house, like, you know, cause that's like, you know, there's really, you know, you can't have an excuse for that because that's really just like straight for the most part illegal. I mean, obviously depending on, you know, they want to try to avoid that. Now, again, if there's a one-off night where you're stranded somewhere or you can't find somebody, you know, but you know, at a rest area, the cops, if they see that you are legit sleeping and that you're not causing a problem, they're not going to bother you. But Here's the thing. Here's the thing that you need to know as a nomad or somebody living out of your car. That's not your permanent campground. I mean, I want to say that clearly. That is not your permanent campground. That is not your home base. Meaning that, you know, this cop, yeah, no problem me spending the night because he doesn't want me driving. But if I show up there every night for, you know, five months straight, you know, and he may come and rightfully so that he's going to bust, you know, he's going to say, well, look, you know, what's going on here? You know, you can't, you know, spend every night, you know, you know, but there's people that travel that go from one part of the state to the other and a couple nights of the week, they stay at rest stops. And so if, you know, that, you know, that's totally understandable, you know, you know, that's what rest areas are for. But what I'm trying to say is whether it's a rest area or whether it's Walmart, they're for, for the most part, one-offs, you know, like, you know, one day here, you know, two days and it, you know, you got to have to go to the next spot. You, they are not made for you to camp out again. You're not in that mindset of, I got my lawn chair outside. I got, you know, uh, you know, table set up outside. I got, you know, picnic table set up in the back. I mean, you're doing your laundry, you know what I mean? On the side of the building. I mean, come on. The cops are for the most part, I mean, there's always exceptions, but these guys, I mean, the reasonable, everybody in life for the most part is a reasonable, fair people, you know, but you can't be unreasonable yourself. I mean, so if you're at a rest area and and, you know, you're spending the night there or something. If it's a 24 by 7 one, and depending on, it may still have two or three hour rules. But if it's like a tr truck stop area also where they allow that or an RV sleep overnight, it's not going to be a major issue for them for one night, two night or whatever you're going to do. But you just have to be mindful and respectful to your environment that it's not, you're not there every single night camping out. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not made for that. And, and you know, they're going to say something, you know, and so... As a nomad, what you sign up for is that you have to be flexible to just move to different locations. And if, you know, at this Walmart, they have a one night rule, you know, that you're at this Walmart for one night, then you travel to a different area, you're that, and then you go to a state park for one, two nights or a month, or, and then you go, you know, if you need to sleep at a rest area for a certain amount of time, that's, you know, within their limitation and it's not being disrespectful to the law, then you do that. I mean, so as a nomad, as someone living out of your car, you sign up to move from location to location based on the rules and regulations of that area. 
I mean, and once in a while, if you slip up or something bad, I mean, you know, if it's done, you know, if you're, if you're living your life in a respectful manner and you're being mindful of the laws and you're being a productive citizen, I mean, you know, you're going to be fine. But what I want to say, share is one, my lesson learned, because I was still figuring out the nomad life. I was still figuring out how to live in your car. I mean, I watched some YouTube videos and everything, but like I said, there's nothing like getting in the game. It's not like getting hit in the mouth. I mean, you got to experience it for yourself. You got to figure out what works, what doesn't work, what I can do, what I can't do. So you know, rest areas, Walmarts, you know, things of that nature. I mean, even state parks, some of that, you know, or, or national parks, you can only stay there, you know, maybe for like two weeks straight, and then you have to move to another one in a different location. And so there's different, you know, uh, things like that, that you have to consider, uh, because it is, I mean, for a nomad, for somebody living out of their car, the cops come and knocking at your door in the middle of the night is, is probably the thing you fear the most. And I don't like to use the word fear or scared, but that is, I mean, that's the number one thing on your mind that you don't want somebody coming and, and, and you're not going to get in huge trouble, you know, as long as you're respectful and, you know, you don't make it a habit, but you know, that's the number one thing, you know, you don't want to, you know, you, you don't want to cause a problem with the law. Certainly. I mean, you didn't, you know, you don't want to live a nomadic life and you don't have problems with the law. That's not wisdom, but, um, you know, that's your number one fear. And, uh, that's the lesson I learned. You know, you want to blend in, you know, that's, you know, I'm, as, as I'm concluding this video, but this is a very important video for nomads or people that live out of their cars or RVs or whatever. Cause the plan, I mean, believe me, I'm on the road, I'm in rest areas, I'm in Walmarts, I'm in parks and you know, RVs, people who live out of their car, conversion vans, they're all in that same category. And so you have to, you know, be respectful of that. And you just have to be mindful that, you know, you, you're in a flow, you're in a movement, you're not staying in a stuck location for a stuck amount of time. Because you just don't want that, you don't want that to, you know, it's all, you know, things may happen from time to time, but you don't want that knock or that flashlight beaming at you in the middle of the night because it's just, uh, it's a scary feeling. And, uh, you know, and anything can happen. You'll catch somebody at the wrong time, at the wrong night. And, um, you know, nothing ever be 100% perfect, but either way, I want to share that experience. I think that's helpful to share, uh, lessons learned. And, uh, and, you know, that's it. I hope it helps you on your journey. I hope that you're okay if that's happened to you. I know plenty of people that it's happened to. Uh, as far as, you know, you know, cops come or somebody come knocking in the middle of the night at the door or at their window, and uh, it's startling. It startles you. And then you have to realize, that, like I said, especially in the beginning as you figure out where you go and where you can't go, is, you know, you just you have to be mindful of the rules, the laws, and the regulations of your area. And depending on what state, what country, uh you know, what area you're in, that's going to vary. So it's, it can't make one blanket statement because it's different for everybody and everybody has their own way of living a mobile life. Um, but I'm always trying to be mindful of doing things the right way to, to live a peaceful life. I want to live a peaceful life. I don't want to cause problems and I don't want to get in trouble. I just want to live a peaceful life. That's all. So lessons learned. That's the story of the cops coming, uh, to my window in the beginning the like the first week living out of my car, and going to a rest area that wasn't high traffic and that was, you know, during an off season in the beach area, uh, basically made me stick out like a sore thumb. And, uh, and you know, cops are patrolling. They're being mindful of things that look odd. And that's their job. If something looks out of place, they're going to check it out. You know, that's what they're trained to do. So be mindful. Uh, be respectful to your area and your environment and stay inspired.